Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Together, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajeezu, Da'ifu, Miskeenu, Zalimu, Jahal. And but by the grace of Allah that we are still functioning, that Allah's rahmah and mercy is all uh, merciful, all forgiving. And that we pray Allah forgive our wrongs and via the qurban to take away all our difficulties. That His love for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad so immense that this Yawmul Arafah and the realities of Arafah is an immense cleansing. That all of the rituals of Hajj are the rituals of faith and we've talked about how all of them symbolize faith, Maqam al-Islam to submit, submit the body to the will of our Lord. Maqam al-Iman is the soul to submit and have confidence in the submission of the body and that the body is truly guided. And as a result a child will be born, Fitratul Islam, the innocence of the reality of what Allah has created your soul of the innocence of Islam. Every soul has been created in a deen din Allah is Islam. The, verily the religion of Allah is, is Islam. Means that the soul is created in that ocean of taslim and taslima to be beatific from its submission. So when Allah want to grant it its gift that is the gift of Maqam al ihsan that it comes with its beatific submission. That Yawm al Arafah and this knowledge of awliyaullah that this is the twelfth month of our journeying, twelfth being a completion like the twelve letters and the twelve numbers of the clock. This is our journey coming to an end but immediately beginning again as we enter into Muharram. This is a month of pilgrimage that only Allah teach us that from 1 through 12 this is Suratul Yusuf and the beatific journey, the beatific qissa that Allah describing, I have to separate you from all who know you and all who call upon you, I have to put you and isolate you into a well, now the whole world is isolated and then I'll bring you up from the well. The one who brings you up is your guide and that you'll be sent a guide to bring you up and teach you how to enter into the kingdom of Allah as asir, as a captive. You came with your title, your wealth, your status, your position, your relationship to family members and, and noble characters, all of that means nothing to Allah unless the servant is in an ocean of submission. And Sayyidina Yusuf comes and teaches with all the stations of father and all the stations that were promised and all the realities he was to be dressed in, the first thing Allah is go into the well, submit, isolate, begin to know yourself, a guide will come and that guide will take you out of that well. But as a result of taking you out of the well, He's not taking you out so that you have free will and that you can run around and do whatever you want again. But He's taking you out as a captive and this is in spiritual understanding that when we feel our life has been thrown into that well, we're trying our best to lose our will. That, Ya Rabbi oh, I'm in a place where I know that you know best and I definitely don't know. And if I truly feel I'm being guided, Ya Rabbi guide me, don't let me to be in charge of me. That send your guidance to me and that becomes then the one whom is guiding that servant out of the well. And the whole guidance is into that reality of the kingdom that we're going to take you now into the presence of the king whom will buy you. The king will buy you and that's why in Surah Al-Tawbah the gate of this reality Allah said, we purchased from the believers their dunya and we gave them in exchange their akhirah. There's a transaction happening that in the heart of that servant 
they know that as much as the dunya desire they can give up, Allah doesn't leave a void in the heart. As much as you give off the electron, the negativity, you're actually picking up as a result the positivity. The equation has to be balanced. When you give off one you're not negative one, Allah will give you a plus one. So your equation is always balanced. For everything you give off Allah will fill it with what is positive. From whatever you do is nothing lost in Allah's way because Allah is not one whom it has anything that diminishes. When Allah says, give in my way, immediately assume that Allah has already granted in the way. It never diminishes, it's from Allah's oceans. So when you give a bad character, it's not like you're now devoid of anything, Allah actually filled you with positive character. So then from this knowledge of the twelfth month awliyaullah are coming and teaching that the gateway once the student understood taslim, then the student begins to understand that awliya are taking them through 9, 18, 27, 36, 45 all the way to the twelfth hijab. The twelfth hijab, twelve times nine is 108, is what? The kawthar, Surat al-Kawthar. So in this holy month of Zuhajj, it's the month of the kawthar. Now think about all the hajj rituals, that this is the month of kawthar, inna taynaka al-kawthar fasalli li rabbika wanhar. So kawthari, the people who drink from Allah's eternal fountains of oceans of hayat, that its owner is Sayyidina Muhammad and anyone whom drinks from the fountain of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they have be granted eternity, they'll be granted the Bahrul Hayat, they'll be granted to be Kawthari. As a result of that Kawthar they are dressing and drinking from that Zamzam and Allah asked them from their character, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْهَارِ Pray continuously unto your Lord means every form of worshipness and sacrifice. Our life now is then based on our worshipness and our sacrifice. What Allah will call the servant to sacrifice at each moment and that's why all of Hajj all these rituals mean nothing if Arafah is not understood. So that's why they say then Prophet three words, Prophet that Hajj is Arafah. And that Arafah is Hajj, means our whole life is to reach this mountain of Jabal Rahmah. The mountain of Allah's rahmah wa ma arsalnaka rahmatan lil alameen. And that Allah wanted us to understand and reach to this mountain of rahmah. This mountain of rahmah, Sayyidina Muhammad And the reason that I did not allow Sayyidina Ibrahim to touch the hair of Sayyidina Ismail because this was the arrival of Nur Muhammadi from this light. His light is of such a purity that I wanted to test his father's faith. Are you willing to sacrifice all your property and all that you wanted for Salli li Rabbika wanhar? The Sayyidina Ibrahim is a kawthari reality that he was giving everything. And not only he's pure but his awlad, his child has much more yaqeen that is teaching from a child that you find me to be patient means he sees and he hears and Allah speaking to him. Otherwise how you have sakina when someone about to kill you? No one has patience for that. What type of yaqeen does Sayyidina Ismail have that he's speaking with the Divine and teaching his father, don't worry, you find me to be patient means what a life that will sacrifice itself, will sacrifice its form, will sacrifice its soul. It, the pure of the pure now is 
going to be brought up onto that mountain. And from that light Allah said, we gave a tremendous ransom. Reach to that reality that within you this is a Muhammadan reality. When people say, don't say Muhammadan, that's a colonial expression. No, excuse me, the colonials understood the reality more than you. They could see the dress of faith on you and they saw you as a Muhammadan light. And that was the light in which the angels prostrated. Why they prostrate? Because uh, they were impressed with the knowledge of Sayyidina Adam as They were impressed with this light from Divinely Presence that nobody had permission to see that light. They knew it is the light of the light, what Jewish people call the holy of holy, where they're not even allowed to mention Huwa. They're not allowed to mention Yahweh, it's a name that not permitted for them to mention. And Allah just said, they're not allowed to mention it but this is your Surat Al-Ikhlas, Qul Huwa, Qul Huwa is Yahweh. It's the unspoken name of Allah that immense reality, that immense light that reflecting into the light of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result they're entering up onto the mountain of Arafah, onto the mountain Jabal Rahmah, onto the day of Arafah. Araf, Arafah is the one whom now knows because this is a mountain of Marifah. If you did your Islam in your life and trying continuously to submit and we're asking to be dressed from Maqam al-Iman in which we love Sayyidina Muhammad more than ourselves that's why it's all about sacrifice. Don't get the car that you want and give towards the mawlid. Don't put all the time into conquering every business and every development and every type of program that you have and do something for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad The time that you have you could be doing in worshipness, that's sacrifice. The aspirations and goals that you had to conquer the earth, you say, maybe I can tone it down a bit so that I can worship and that I can build my love for Sayyidina Muhammad that's immense worshipness. They came onto the earth and they realized, what they're going to conquer from this earth? and die giving it away to who? They use this earth to conquer all their bad desires and to build their homes in paradise. And everything that Allah gave to them they used as a means in which to put a down payment in their house in paradise. How here you save, you save, you save so that you can one day buy a home. Every action that they're doing is with the intention, Ya Rabbi is this going towards my house in paradise? This action that I'm doing and I'm not doing it for a shaykh, I'm not doing it for any bearded man, I'm not doing it for anyone. But is it getting me my house in paradise? Am I drawing closer to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Not the promises of people, we don't care for promises of people. Or somebody can promise you, I'll do this for you, I'll do that for you, I'm this, I'm that. No one's anything. If you knew the reality you, you'd have a heart attack of who people really are. But who is real is Allah Who is real is Sayyidina Muhammad Allah said, I created this creation in truth. As a result all we have to do all day long is, Ya Rabbi am I increasing my love for Prophet is this getting my house in paradise? And they lived a life of Salli li Rabbika wanhar. As a result of that light and that, that reality of reaching to this station of Arafah that, Ya Rabbi let me live a life of this sacrifice and Allah then you're going to be from those whom they drink from this kawthar, means their, their drink is the knowledge that continuously coming on to this soul. If you don't understand how they talk you have to keep coming and, and understanding tariqah talk. When we say drink from the kawthar it's not that somebody keep giving you a cup of water. To drink from the kawthar means you're been destined to be given Divinely knowledges that are not repeat knowledges of this earth. These are not knowledges that are found in books, 
and they're not knowledges that are talked widely about because most people would be killed trying to talk about them. Because it's not Diet Coke, it's not Pepsi, it's not Orange Crush, it's Kawthar. It's something that is very rare. When Allah destined for you to drink from the Kawthar, imagine your soul is an oasis and every time these shaykhs are opening their heart and their mouth, this Kawthar is flowing onto your soul, flowing onto your reality. And if you're destined to be with them for a week, you've drank a week of that reality, a month of that reality, a year, ten years or some a lifetime will be destined to drink from that reality. And that is Arafah, that we reached up to this and, and the people of Arafah they're continuously asking, Ya Rabbi, I want to be from that Kawthar, I want to be from that level of purity, I want to be from Ashiqeen and Ahbab and Nabi That Ya Rabbi let this year that's passing because this is the end of our pilgrimage, Muharram is now opening. Muharram is, a, is the month of no haram that we're asking, Ya Rabbi that I want to be from this reality where I came short, open for me the reality of the qurban. And that's why Allah is this, why Allah to say this is a tremendous ransom because this is a station that can't be achieved, it can't be purchased. But Allah is giving the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad you have a right to it. I want to give this to you because Allah want to bring you to a level in which to give us the honour of being in the presence of the most honoured in creation. When Allah has such a high love for Sayyidina Muhammad can't let trash come into that presence. So Allah and every opportunity is saying, I'm going to raise you. I'm going to make you like a king so that you can sit in the presence of my king. I'm going to make you pure so you can be in the, in the presence of my most pure, my most praised, my most beloved. I make you cleaner, more beautific than the malaika and angels. Why? Because Allah's love for the reality, not because of our stations. Our stations only deserve difficulty. So then Allah says, I give a tremendous ransom. As soon as you give the qurban even you don't have all of it, portion of it, intention of it, whatever it is, is that, Ya Rabbi I'm making intention let that qurban to take away all my sins, sayyata amalina, all the sins of my actions that block me from reaching that, all the azab that shaitan has put upon me, upon my heart, upon my family, upon everything upon me Ya Rabbi. Take it away with the qurban, take it away with the sacrifice of that animal and that's why we talked years before, don't desecrate these animals, don't show them in a bad light, don't show how you slaughter and abuse these creatures. If you understood the value of what that creature is going to carry for you, you would have kissed its forehead and sacrificed in the most honourable and noble of ways. The tears to come from your eyes of what he's going to carry so that you can reach what you have to reach. No, now they show this horrible slaughtering of a camel and the blood is flying everywhere and crazy person posting that. You have to have shame and feel sorrow for the creature that is dying like that and that he's dying to carry your burdens so that you can reach what you have to reach. That's what Prophet brought for us the best of character. If people want to love Islam they have to follow Sayyidina Muhammad pay no attention to Muslims. Muslims are not the representatives of Islam, Sayyidina Muhammad is. And that's what people are making sick, they watch how these Muslims behave and say, if this is Islam I want nothing to do with it, these people are of Vashi. They're not the representatives of that reality. The representative and the only representative of this reality is Sayyidina Muhammad and no one comes close, no one comes close. Then but a drop and if you meet the one who comes close he's crying all the time, beautific and humble in his spirit and in his being. And those people are lost today. 
all hidden but our love for Sayyidina Muhammad is the way. Showing that love, trying to glorify that love and to achieve the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad to reach to this kawthar, to reach to this reality of this holy night and that Allah dress us from the barakah of the Eid when they're coming down from the Arafah and asking Jabbar Rahmah that forgive us our sins, forgive us all our amas, read from the app. Each app, each du'a has one that, that relieves a hundred thousand sins, million sins. These are the du'as of the Sultanul Awliyas. When you recite these du'as what type of difficulties Allah taking away? until the tomorrow for the Eid when Allah begin from tonight dressing everyone from the blessings of the Eid, blessings of the Qurban. That we pray that Allah dress us, bless us, forgive us, take away all the difficulties and grant us a beautific Muharram in which we step in the month of Muharram with our right foot. On the first day of Muharram we step with the right foot, Ya Rabbi let me to make this a month of a hijrah towards your Divinely Presence towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and has immense, immense blessings. And that my journey be a, a completion of that reality. Look how we stepped in that Muharram and how we ended up in the middle of a pandemic in the Hajj. What, what coming upon this earth is something unimaginable. And why and how Allah is going to change everything. You wake up in the morning and the world is changing. We pray that Allah allow us to change with that change and keep us to see and to be with Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.